The Book of Accidents, Designed for Young Children. Author Unknown. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Peter Eastman. In presenting to his little readers the Book of Accidents, the author conceives that he cannot render a more important service to the rising generation, and to parents, than by furnishing them with an account of the accidents to which children, from their inexperience or carelessness, are liable. If generally studied, it will save the lives of thousands, and relieve many families from the long and unavailing misery attendant on such occurrences. THE BOOK OF ACCIDENTS PLAYING WITH HORSES Horses are very dangerous, but most useful animals. To be kicked by them is almost certain death, and children often play about them and go near their heels without being sensible of their danger. In the engraving we see a little innocent who had been engaged in gathering locks of fresh grass and giving them to her papa's horse. After employing herself in this way for some time, she carelessly took hold of his tail, unconscious of the danger that she was in, until the horse, by a kick of one leg, laid her lifeless on the ground. Crossing Streets Careless children, in spite of warning, often run across the street when carts and carriages are near, and are knocked down and run over. Children have been so very careless at times that it appeared as if they wanted to see how near they could get to carriages and not be run over. Here is a miserable little girl who attempted to cross the street as a cartman was passing with a heavy load. The horse has knocked her down, and she now lies under the wheel, where she will be crushed to death in spite of the efforts of the man to stop his horse. Children should be particularly careful when crossing the streets in winter, as sleighs are then running to and fro with great rapidity, and sometimes being without jingles, the little boys and girls know not their approach, until their danger stares them in the face and escape is impossible. Children should always cross the streets after the carriages have passed. Worrying Dogs Many children delight in teasing dogs, and without caution go too near them, by which they get miserably torn and mangled. Wicked boys sometimes hold a piece of meat towards the dogs, and as they approach with demonstrations of joy in hope of receiving it, they suddenly take it away. By repeating this, the dogs become enraged, and often severely repay them for their trickishness. What these boys had been doing to enrage the dog we cannot tell, but suspect they had been tormenting him in some way, thinking that as he was chained he could not injure them. But they were mistaken in this, and one of them is likely to be bitten very severely. Dogs are celebrated for their sagacity and their attachment to man, and many instances are recorded of their having saved the lives of their masters. But all dogs are not of this description. Some are cross and ferocious, barking at and biting all who come near them. Playing with Candles Here we see the danger of playing with lighted candles. One little girl has set the bed curtains on fire, and the other her hair, and both are in great danger of being burnt to death unless someone grants them speedy assistance. Learn from this never to play with candles. Perhaps the little girl who has set the curtains on fire was reading in a book after she had retired to rest. The practice of doing this ought to be forbidden by every parent. It has occasioned the destruction of many nice houses, 
and the loss of many precious lives. The other little girl was probably walking across the room in a rapid manner, and the light coming in contact with her curly hair, it blazed up like a flash of powder. Unless she is possessed of great presence of mind, it will communicate to her ruffles, and then to her lower clothes. I hope she will not attempt to run, for that would make it blaze still more furiously. Scalded at the Table Little children who can just reach to the top of a table often endeavor to drink from the spout of a teapot, and in consequence scald their mouths and throats and die miserable deaths in a few hours. Some have even been so thoughtless as to drink out of the spout of a tea-kettle, and have instantly been scalded to death in great torments. Here in the picture are two little girls around a tea-table. Children as young as these appear to be should never come to the table unless attended by some older persons to wait upon them. Very likely these two little girls thought they would have a fine time all by themselves. But only see how badly they perform the honors of the table. They are both standing up, and one of them is using her little patty to obtain a lump of sugar when she should make use of the tongs that are in the bowl. The other, in attempting to pour out a cup of tea, poured it upon her little bosom and scalded herself very severely. Tossed by a bowl. The bowl is a noble-looking but ferocious and terrible creature, and when provoked he assumes the air of sullen majesty, and often tears up the ground with his feet and horns. They should be carefully avoided, and never be teased by children. These two boys here seen had been taking a short walk, and were crossing the fields together when they were pursued and one of them overtaken by the ferocious animal. After taking the poor boy on his horns, he tossed him high into the air, and catching him as he fell, tossed him up again, and thus continued to do, until left for dead. The other boy fortunately escaped from the enraged animal, and arrived home very late in the evening, panting and almost exhausted. He had a doleful story indeed to relate to his parents, and often would he assemble together his young friends and companions, and entertain them in giving an account of the ill fate of his comrade, and of his own narrow escape. Riding a Wild Horse Many little boys lose their lives by getting on their papa's horses. Their light weight encourages the animal to frisk and gallop, and the child becoming terrified falls off, his feet drag in the stirrups, and he is kicked or otherwise dashed to pieces. In the picture before us we have a lad who set out on horseback, in company with a number of others, to attend a military parade. As he drew near the troops, the splendor of their equipments and the sound of the drums and fifes so alarmed his horse that he commenced prancing and galloping about so furiously that his young master soon lost all command over him. When the horse perceived this, he by one desperate spring threw the boy from his back and bent his way homeward with the fleetness of a deer. Horses are very useful to man as beasts of burden, and sometimes become so attached to an affectionate master that they will come at his call and follow him wherever he wishes. Playing with Knives Nothing is so foolish and dangerous as to play with knives, scissors, and forks. Bad wounds are often the consequence, and many children have thus lost their lives. Here is a little boy who has had his hand half cut off by the carelessness of his little sister. They went forth into the fields with very sharp knives to gather flowers and to cut boughs for the purpose of decorating their rooms. 
as they were cutting down a very large one, the little girl's knife slipped, struck her brother's hand, and made an incision to the bone. The blood flowed copiously, the boy cried heartily, and all this happened for want of proper care on the part of the little girl. Children sometimes procure very sharp knives, which they carry about with them in their pockets, and to test the sharpness of them they are often cutting chairs, desks, and tables, and whittling about the house, much against their parents' wishes, to their own danger, and to the annoyance of the housemaid. Playing with Firearms No child should touch a gun or pistol, or on any account present one at another person. We behold a little boy shooting his sister dead, an accident that too often occurs for want of warning. Guns and pistols of every description are very dangerous, especially in the hands of young persons. Children often get their little heads together, procure a small cannon and some powder, and go forth to some unfrequented place and spend hours in firing it off. This is a very dangerous amusement, and we would recommend them to pursue such as are attended with less danger. For it often happens that the powder explodes in their hands, the cannon bursts or goes off when they do not expect it, and they thus have their faces, hands, and clothes burnt in a most shocking manner. Parents should dissuade their children from such dangerous amusements, furnish them with books that will give a taste for learning, and encourage them in virtuous habits. Playing with Fire In the absence of parents, giddy children often light paper in the fire and play with it. And here we behold a little girl burning a large sheet. By her thoughtlessness in doing this, and by approaching too near the grate, her clothes have taken fire. From the attention which she is paying to the burning paper, she does not see that her apron is fast burning up, although her sister is calling loudly to her and endeavoring to warn her of her danger. But poor girl, she heeds it not. Some parents who have left their children alone in the house while they went on a visit have had their ears assailed by the cry of fire, and on returning home, arrived only in time to see their house in flames and hear the shrieks of their children without being able to grant them relief. When children's clothes take fire, they should not run about, but should immediately lay down on the floor and roll, and thus extinguish the flames. Throwing Stones Wicked and malicious boys often throw stones, by which they not only hurt and maim one another, but often knock out an eye, and are disfigured for life. What a sight is this! We see that one has already received a severe bruise on the face, and is crying in a most doleful manner, as the blood gushes from the wound. What delight they appear to take in hurling the rocky missiles at the wounded boy! What a sight it will be to his parents to see their son come crying home with his face covered with clotted blood. If such conduct is so wicked in the sight of men, how much more so must it be in the sight of him who seeth not as man seeth? In winter the children of one school sometimes challenge those of another to combat having provided themselves with an abundance of snow and ice balls, and arrayed themselves in order for battle, the contest is commenced and carried on with great desperation, each one aiming to injure his antagonist. Falling out of a coach Here we see an accident of a serious nature, a little girl falling out of the door of a coach. This little girl is truly in a most dangerous situation, although the horses are going at a very moderate pace. Should the driver happen to hear her cries, she may yet be saved. But 
if he does not, what a terrible death it may be her unfortunate lot to encounter. The fastenings of coach doors are never to be depended upon, and children should never lean upon them or against them. The door flies open, they tumble out, the wheels go over them, and they are often killed on the spot. It is a great source of gratification to children to attend their parents when going to ride in a coach. As they leave the bustling scenes of the city and approach the neat residences of country people, all things appear new to them. They inhale the pure air, gather the sweet flowers, and, if no accident occurs, they return highly elated with their visit. A Boy Drowning Hundreds of poor boys are drowned every year from not being sensible of the danger of water. They go into ponds and rivers without knowing their depth, and by one fatal step they sink, never to rise again. Boys should never bathe but in baths made for the purpose, or should be attended by those who can help them if necessary. Here we have a picture of two little boys who went out one afternoon to bathe. One of them ventured out too far, and we see him on the point of sinking, extending his arms toward his brother in hopes of being rescued from a watery grave. What sorrow rests upon his countenance as he thinks of loving parents, kind friends, and affectionate brothers and sisters. But we hope he will be saved, and prove a useful member of society. Ah! A helping hand is near! The strange position of his brother attracted the notice of a benevolent stranger who rushed into the water and saved the drowning boy at the imminent risk of his own life. Climbing on Chairs When little children first commence creeping or walking about the room, they are continually contriving some new means of diversion, and one which they early discover is that of playing about chairs, and a great number of accidents happen to them by getting up onto the back of chairs in which persons are sitting. The person gets up, and the chair falls back on the poor child, who gets sadly hurt. An accident of this kind is here represented, where the mother is seen just rising from a chair on which was standing her little daughter. How alarmed appears the parent as she beholds the situation of the child, the next moment to have her pretty little head bruised against the fender. Children should not climb about or stand in chairs. They were made to sit in. Little children have sometimes had made for them small chairs, prettily painted, in which they take great delight to sit and rock. These are much better for them than the large ones, as they are not so liable to fall from them. Boys Fighting Wicked boys fight like dogs and other brutes, by which they not only do each other great injury, but by such conduct they disgrace the human form and Christian character. Here are seen two boys thus shamefully engaged. What a sight they present! Boys endowed with faculties capable of serving their Creator and of planning means for each other's happiness are here seen wallowing in the mud and dirt and striving to do each other harm. Perhaps one of these boys has for an excuse that the other abused him and provoked him to such a degree that he could not endure it. Good children who happen to fall into the society of bad boys should immediately avoid their company, suffer abuse rather than resent it, render good for evil, and by so doing they will put to shame their enemies and gain the victory. Bears and lions, we know, sometimes growl and fight. But children, you should never let such angry passions rise. 
your little hands were never made to tear each other's eyes. Falling out of a window How important that those who have the charge of children should be constant in their attendance on them, and ever on the alert lest some accident befall them. They always have a great desire to get upon the window seats and look out, and hundreds of children are killed every year by leaning out of windows. They overbalance themselves, and then all the world cannot save them. What feelings of pity run through us as we behold the situation of this poor girl! In another moment she may be dashed upon the rocky pavement below to be picked up by her parents a mangled corse. What horror is depicted on her countenance as she looks forward to the impending ruin! But we hope that the calamity may be averted by the fortunate appearance of the chambermaid in whose care she was left, and who criminally neglected her charge. Troubling the Cook This little girl here is seen rushing forward to tell some idle tale, perhaps, to the cook. Unless she is very careful, she may stumble over the pot of water which is standing on the floor, or be scalded by the water running from the dish which the cook is carrying to the table. Children should beware of scalding water. They often run about a kitchen when the cook is preparing the dinner, and get sadly burnt or scalded. And sometimes they play with the tea kettle or tea urn in the parlor, and repent their folly by getting sadly scalded. The writer knows of a little boy who was very fond of being in the kitchen, that he might see how johnny cakes and pies and all such things were made and from his talkativeness occasioned considerable trouble. In the absence of the cook for a short time, what should he do but go and sit himself down into a kettle of boiling hot water? His screams soon brought his mother, and with difficulty his life was saved. Tumbling Downstairs among the many accidents to which children are liable, perhaps few are more common or more alarming than tumbling downstairs. An accident of this kind is here represented. The little girl was playing about at the head of the stairs, and, though frequently cautioned by her mother of the danger and carelessness of so doing, yet she heedlessly neglected the charge, and the consequence was that one of her feet slipped off the first step, and down she came headlong, crying and bawling in the most dreadful manner, and alarming all the inmates of the house. She was picked up, terribly bruised, and conveyed to bed, where she remained many days in a suffering condition. At length she recovered, and never after was she known to neglect the prudent caution of her parents, but became a pattern of obedience to all the children in the neighborhood. Climbing Trees Never climb trees, for any purpose whatever. The boughs often break, or boys miss their hold, when down they come and often break their bones or necks. Many boys do it to steal fruit, or cruelly to take the nests of poor birds, and are generally punished severely for their malicious crime. These boys had ascended this tree for the purpose of robbing a nest of its young, and one of them is seen falling headlong to the ground ere he had accomplished his wicked purpose. Children live long and happy who take warning and obey the cautious instructions of their experienced and affectionate parents, who are constantly devising means conducive to the happiness of their children. End of The Book of Accidents Recorded by Peter Eastman